Hey guys, this is going to be a review of episodes 121 to 130 of Naruto Shippuden. And I know I said I was doing five episodes at a time, and I still plan on doing that, but I'm so behind on reviews and everything that I managed to watch ten episodes as opposed to five before I got around to filming this review. And instead of separating them, and one, it taking longer, and two, me getting the episodes confused, I just decided to review all ten of them at the same time. The thing I hate about this is like the earlier five episodes seem so far away now that I can't really remember them. I remember the more recent episodes that I watched, especially the one that I watched like yesterday, a lot clearer. So I'm, I'm gonna try and go through stuff that happened in the earlier episodes, but I don't remember that quite as well. Like I remember it, but it's not as fresh in my mind. Okay, one thing that I definitely want to mention from the earlier episodes is um, Karen, and I'm, I know that's not exactly how you pronounce her name, I can't remember how exactly it's pronounced, but she annoys me a lot. Like, I really don't like her. She, I think I mentioned in my past review how I wasn't going to judge whether I liked those characters yet or not, I was going to wait and see. Um, I don't remember exactly if I did or not, but I, I don't, I don't like her at all. I, I really dislike her, she gets on my nerves. Kabuto, like, approaching Naruto and then revealing that he took in Orochimaru's, like, I don't even remember what it was, but, like, Orochimaru was, like, regenerating or whatever in his body. I don't even know how to describe it. That was so creepy. And just, why would you do that? <laughs> even, like, that's the most insane thing and like basically sacrificing himself for Orochimaru it was just I yeah I don't know because I was actually before that episode questioning why he was so loyal to Orochimaru and then he goes and does that and then we had Deidre and Sasuke's large fight and everything which was pretty awesome but um when Deidre did the thing that made everyone like explode and they were all like papery and stuff. It really reminded me of Deathly Hallows when Voldemort dies because they did- it, it looked the same and I hate that scene in Harry Potter just because they don't have him die normally. Here, like, it's not a problem but I'm just- it reminded me of that scene in Harry Potter that I absolutely hate. It also killed me that Naruto and them were so close to Sasuke and didn't actually see him. Like, that just- that kills me so much. And then Naruto runs into Itachi and they're talking and Naruto's line about how Sasuke is like a brother to him made me so emotional. Like, I can't get over that line. That was just an awesome moment and I loved that line. I really liked getting a lot of Jiraiya's like backstory these past few episodes. That was pretty awesome and really interesting. Um, just, I don't know, I just kind of like how he just randomly in ended up on that path and then found out there's like a prophecy about him and everything and I just thought it was pretty cool and I liked learning that and I really love how we're getting all of these backstories that all help tie into the original story. I really like that. So yeah, I like all of the backstory storylines that we're getting scattered throughout the episodes right now. I thought it was really weird though when Jiraiya, Orochimaru, and Tsunade meet the three orphans. Um, and Orochimaru makes the comment about how they should kill them or whatever, and then they don't, obviously, and then the orphans go on to find the Akatsuki, and Orochimaru joins the Akatsuki, and I just think that's a weird connection, and then when Jiraiya meets, um, what's his name? The one kid, um, <laughs> who's become Pain, and he says to Jiraiya that he bets that Jiraiya wishes that they'd killed him, like Orochimaru said. And I just thought it was all this weird connection because Orochimaru actually joined the Akatsuki. And I just- that struck me as weird. And we got to see Naruto's parents, like when Naruto's mom was pregnant with Naruto. And I don't really have much to say about that except that scene was really cute and it made me a little emotional and really happy. I really find these three orphans to be really fascinating characters. Like, we learned about them as kids, and then it went back 
and showed pain and I like immediately made the connection that that's the one kid but obviously as we learn later it's not really him it's the other one using his body but like it's just interesting I really want to know more about their backstory I'm assuming we're going to learn how they got to where they got and how they became like evil but it's really sad because Jiraiya like trained them and now he has to fight him and I, and, and it makes me sad when things like that happen but I really enjoyed finally learning the Yukatsuki's like motive like why they're doing what they're doing um, I do wonder if like all of the members of the Yukatsuki actually like have that motive or if they're just joining to join you know what I mean because like Orochimaru joined but I'm pretty sure he didn't have the Akatsuki's motive I'm pretty sure he just joined to join the Akatsuki and I'm just kind of wondering how many of the members like actually share that vision or that motive and how many of them are just in the Akatsuki because it's the Akatsuki if that makes sense but it was interesting getting to know learn like why the Akatsuki is doing what it's doing and I'm just really hope that we get the backstory of how those orphan kids got to that point and everything because I think that is a really interesting. I just really love that they did that though because I love when your, your villains have storyline and you know the villain's motive and I also really like when the villains have a motive other than just being evil like they're not just doing things to, they're not just doing horrible things to do horrible things but they actually have like a vision of what they want and sometimes and I think it's even more interesting when they actually believe in what they're doing like they're not just trying to be evil but they actually think that they're doing something good in some messed up way because it makes things more interesting when each side thinks that they're right and that they're doing the right thing so I really like what they've done with that so far and I'm really interested in seeing more about that and more about the backstory there. We also saw the frog thing that Dry summoned that I think is like they called him the key I think to the nine tails or like something like that. He's somehow important to that and that was interesting. I don't really have much to say because not much happened but that should be interesting in the future. And I think that is all. I am really excited to watch the next episodes and see what happens after like episode 130. So hopefully I'll be able to watch those like relatively quickly and review them relatively quickly since I'm so far behind. But I will see you guys later. Bye.